This is iFanboy Pick of the Week, number 820, brought to you by iFanboy listeners just like you who aren't invading anyone, who are who are just not making it worse. I am Josh Flanagan. I'm here with my co-host, Connor Kilpatrick. Hello. And of course, our tertiary uh, uh, host who shows up relatively regularly, Ryan Haupt. Ooh, I like tertiary. Good use of the word tertiary. I love that word. Happy yeah. to be here. Like this is a tertiary Helmsworth. We are I, well, I don't, I don't like week. that. I don't like that comparison. I reject that comparison. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember the tertiary Helmsworth name. Did I say Helmsworth or Hemsworth? Hemsworth. Okay, so there's Chris and there's Liam and then yeah. there's who's He's on Westworld. One. He's on Westworld. I know what he looks right. like. Yes, yeah, he was the security guard guy. Yep, but I don't I don't want it. <laughs> What's interesting about the Hemsworths is that oh, they they drop in attractiveness considerably. Oh wow, all right, jeez. No, they're yeah. like Wahlbergs. Luke. It's Luke, Luke Hemsworth. There you go. Yep. They're like Wahlbergs. You got Marky and then you got Donnie and then you got that other guy. I was watching something. I think it was The Departed and there was a scene I go, "Hey, that guy's a Wahlberg." And he but he was like a working class dumpy looking Wahlberg. What what is happening? Sorry, I, know, you show? I, I was trying like to make you guys this laugh. Is a glass houses situation. Listen, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> this is this isn't a like look down at. This is oh, he's like me. We're I fanboy every week. One of us picks the book they liked. Yeah, you don't want to get airs on. You know what I mean? Uh, and Chris Hemsworth is extremely handsome. Can we just agree on that? I think all of them are. None of them are bad looking dudes. <laughs> yeah, just... right. But in comparison, that's to where the you get first that's where you get one in trouble. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. I think is Luke is older than Chris. I don't know. What, I, I'm confused by your. I don't think it is this is why the show goes long. I'm confused by your assertion of first, uh, like first in your scale of attractiveness. I don't think is their birth order or age or any of that. It's only attractiveness. And again, this is this is a this is a subjective. Uh, Nobody here is saying Chris Hemsworth is not handsome. How many? I I, I don't who think would that's say the that? question at all. I think he's talking about Luke, and it doesn't matter. I we think have everyone knows we're talking about Luke, and that's the problem. I don't think Luke's listening, and I don't think that he would he would argue with it because I he think gets Luke paid might say less. that he might say I care. I'm pretty sure <laughs> any one of these guys could take any one of us and break us in half like a stick. Oh, absolutely! So. Any person from the island of Australia is tougher than me by default. The, the question is, would we like it? How many? The question is, how many listeners have we lost? <laughs> is it too early to start drinking? What is <laughs> if happening? this is your first episode? Welcome. <laughs> Welcome I think show. that I think that longtime people right now are like, oh man, this is a bonus. This doesn't need to be great <laughs> until much later. All right, uh, I'm not going to say a different thing. I'm going to go right through the part and we'll talk about comics. We are a fanboy. Right. Every week, one of us picks the pick the pick the. Oh, you couldn't even get through one line. <laughs> I know, I know. It's because I'm not handsome enough. Every week, one of us picks the book they like the best from their stack of comics, and we call that the pick of the week. So if you have three Hemsworths, you would probably pick Chris. We talk or Mark if you have three. If one books. is if one is Luke Hemsworth. Yeah, right, that's right. Oh we talk about that book. We talk about other books from the week. We talk about a patron pick. Connor's acting like these people are part of his social circle. Like, listen, I can't. You can't. I can't. I just this. think there's no reason to be mean. But go. Nobody's being go. mean. Who's being mean? You said he's the unattractive brother. He's the really least attractive more... of three attractive men. Oh, that's like that's like what's the third best pizza in New York? It's pretty fucking good pizza mean to the pizza they're famous people who are, go, make money go. and their lives are better than mine by orders of magnitude i got i'm so tired let's just keep going we're gonna talk I he's on a show written part. by the second best nolan writer oh my God. <laughs> let's talk about zach whedon who has ascended in the order <laughs> oh we will talk about oh god i hate dave franco we talk about wow. the patron pick. We answer some listener mail if we have time. Uh, the, the world is smoldering shithole right now. Like I listen yeah. to the news and it is terrible. And this is uh, an escape for us. I hope it is for you. Um, everything that happened before was some bullshit. And I, if, I, if I can promise you anything, that we will add some more bullshit to the bottom of this. And for an hour, fifteen minutes, uh, <laughs> it, it'll be it'll be a good time. <laughs> fifteen minutes, we're lucky. Here's your spoiler warning, Ryan. You had the pick this week. Thank God. I did have the pick, and um, I enjoyed reading my comics this week. And the pick that I chose is Captain Carter. Story by Jamie McKelvey, arc by Marika Cresta, colors by Eric Arsenega. Uh, no Arsenega. idea. Arsenega. Arsenega. I feel uh, like you'd be the guy who get that name right. 
I know. I feel my 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 mouth fumbled. That's Niega. And this was a really, you know, it's an issue one, and they don't label it as a what if, but it it is, as far as or, I can tell. It's an Elseworlds. El- Elseworlds. Yeah. But it, it, yeah. I mean, this basically could be the sequel issue to the Captain Carter episode of the TV show, the cartoon show it on is. Disney+. I mean, more yeah. or less. And yeah. I thought it was really fun. So it's it's sort of, you know, the, the Captain Carter episode, if you ignore the cross-dimensional crossover that the series ended with, if you just take her episode... This is basically her Steve Rogers story. If she ended up getting frozen and then thawed out in, it seems like they're going for straight down the line, like 2020, 2022, you know, yep. our modern yep. time. Um, and she goes back to London and she's just trying to get by in London. The The government is interested in her and what she can do. The prime minister seems like an absolute sleazeball. The, there's a, a, a shield like entity known as strike. Um, there's some good Marvel cameos where you can see how the world is different because she never, uh, or, or the world is different because of whatever, but like part of it is her return. And it looks like she's going to, um, put the uniform back on to take on some Hydra thugs and, and, uh, have adventures in the modern world, similar to Steve, but with kind of a cool British twist. And I thought Jamie Kelvey, uh, McKelvey famous for his artistic abilities did a really solid job of writing this book. What'd you guys think? I thought I mean, overall, I liked it. There were some problems. Um, I, I thought the art was really inconsistent from Marika Cresta. Uh, the faces were all over the map. And then I don't know if you should start an issue after the initial cold open with two back-to-back government meetings, but it's, a, it's not the most exciting way to start an issue. But um, over, overall, once it got into the action, once it got into Peggy being out in the world, I liked it. I mean, she's a great character and you know, I I love Elseworld stuff, so that was fun. Um, I don't know why she's not called Captain Britain, other than that alliteration. But it does, I, this I mean, is a I Captain just, Britain thing. It's, is that part of the X Men universe? And I don't know. Well, Captain Scalver, Britain is just, yeah. just a character and trademark rules, though. Like whoever owns. I mean, I guess they're all owned by Disney now, but they're all Marvel characters. She's a Marvel character. I mean, the Captain Britain character is in the book, Elizabeth Braddock, but like. Right. I thought that too for for what if. I was like, why isn't she just called Captain Britain? But anyway, I, overall, I thought it was it was fun. Once I got past the opening, and you know, the art is inconsistent, but you know, otherwise okay. So I thought this was this was fun overall. I was hit by and Connor said the government meetings. Like I, right away, I was hit by walls of text on many pages, and I was like, what the hell is this? As you're starting a story, and mm. that really bothered me. I thought that seems like a kind of kind of a rookie move, and and. You know, Jamie's not a rookie. Um, and it happened many, many pages. Like, you could sort of flip through it, and you could just see pages covered in text, diary form, uh, conversations that go on and on. It's just people sitting in chairs and talking. And I don't think that makes a very good first issue of a superhero series. Now... This is a miniseries, by the way, just FYI. Whatever. Uh, I'm just know, letting it, but no, it's a five-issue right. miniseries. Um, that said, um, I, and I, I also, I thought the art was okay. I didn't. I I I think inconsistent is probably a good way to put it, but it I, it, it felt like it wasn't quite there. Um, and I felt that was a yeah, combination between quite. the coloring. Uh, you know, Arsniega. It's a name I've seen before, but there are bits of it that just look a little unnatural, a little photoshoppy, um, undercooked. We'll say. Um, yeah. I just think structurally, it it read more like a novel. Um, I think that the characterizations and the dialogue and the text of what I was reading was very good. I thought, you know, like, oh, I, all these characters, I, I understand them. I think their voices are very clear. The prime minister's maybe a little bit uh, on the nose. I liked, you know, the neighbor. I liked, uh, you know, uh, is it B- Betsy Braddock? She's Betsy, Elizabeth Braddock. Yeah, Elizabeth, right? yes. Okay. Um, yeah. I was just saying, and I was like, I'm not sure if that's right. And I think that that the dialogue, the voices coming out of all the people who were, especially um, Captain Carter, were, were great. Um, once it got started, and you know, the place in the world, but it was really top heavy uh, in the beginning. You see, the, much... so so the 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 conversations that happened at the beginning of the book, I thought it was interesting. I actually thought it was interesting that like when it's Captain America. He was, you know, it's an American super soldier with the American made using a German scientist super soldier serum. And I actually kind of liked the West winginess of the mm-hmm. the weird debate that like, where does she go now that she's thought out? Yeah. Because like, is she American? It, was she, she was in like an American plane. She got an American serum, but is she a British 
citizen, like where you know it's, it's Russian territory as, as but that's claimed. The first five pages of the book, but I actually it worked for me. Like for whatever, I, for whatever I reason. It. And I again, I thought it read fine. It was interesting, but I have a visceral thing to like start a comic book and then look and just see tons of word balloons and, and, and so do I. On a table. And, so do and I. It got me. Now, once I got over that and I read it, I was like, this is really interesting. But then there were more of those because sometimes you have to do it. Structurally, I think it was a problem. The content, the plot, the story, the characters, those were all strong. I just think it should have been reevaluated. Like, to, like, to just look at, like, if you laid all the pages out in the beginning, you go, oh, this, that's a, we got to move some of this stuff around. That's what I thought. The action sequence was really strong and when she's yep. riding the bus and Hydra attacks and. It was, that was all really well done. This was it was a nice. I'm, I'm looking. I'm scrolling through it now, and it's it's spare. Um, there's not a ton of panels. It's exciting. That that was all. That was probably the highlight of the of the issues, as well as the the neighbor stuff was good. And I, I, I am. I sound like I don't like it. I did. I enjoyed it, and, and like more than I thought. Like based on, I want to like it. I like Jamie McKelvey a lot, and so I was I was rooting for it, and and like just sort of visually and structurally, those first couple of things really got me. Like it just caught me off guard, and I, I had to sort of push through it. And when I did, like I said, I, I I was really interested in what I was reading. By the end, you know, I want to know what happens. I I like the I like the character. I like that. Um, I can hear uh, the actress whose name is yes, Haley Atwell. Atwell. Um, who who might be one of the most beautiful people on earth. In fact, you're 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 on record with that. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, and and you're I've, not, I've you're not wrong, that, but I've thought you know. that since Pillars of the Earth. If you want to go way back, um. And I remember one time uh, a guy that we know who works at Marvel uh, years ago was at uh, something where, with her, like right at the beginning, like Captain America period. Um, and, and and he was next to her at like some panel thing. And, and I was like, you're sitting next to Haley Atwell? And he said to me, he's like, she might be the most beautiful human I've ever seen <laughs> in real life. And it sticks with me because I was like, yeah, I had that. I had that thought about her. But she like it's her here and not in a bad way. Like I'm not looking at bad photo referenced. But yeah, like yeah. you can that that character and that actor comes through in here, which I think is the, vo- is, the is voice is very clear. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. In a way that I I thought was fun. Yeah, I mean as as a, as a, as a mini series as a Elseworlds, you know, it's fun. It's it's Captain Carter and her sidekick Elizabeth Braddock, who is not Captain Britain in this. Or movie. she's Captain Carter, S- Psylocke, right? Yeah. It, it, well, she started off as Captain. As Captain Britain's sister got merged with Psylocke, and now she's Captain. It's all you know. It's Marvel. Yeah, that is messed up. Psylocke used to be Asian. Well, she was, was mind transfer. She was the mind of Elizabeth yeah. Braddock in the body of an Asian woman, well, and then they got separated out. Is now that was that Claremont? I, I probably because that's some psychosexual shit that he's working through there. It's all psychosexual. Yeah, shit I know, but. Claremont's very obvious. Yeah, I'm glad Peggy got to experience tacos, but also those are London tacos. That's a good <laughs> yeah, point. Not, I was thinking that. She, I was like, are we going to go with that as the thing she's I, really excited about? I got to say, if you are a woman who, who went out in 1940s Britain, it might be too much to immediately go to Mexican tacos. <laughs> it may be a good thing that like a London taco is like, oh, this is interesting. Because if you throw them in too far, it just would be too much. Yeah. yeah, but again, it also all depends on who who's running. Like, uh, Mike Romo and I were in Germany once and stumbled upon this place that was all Mexican expats, and it was terrific. Mm-hmm. It was legitimate. I mean, it's different tacos, now so. than it used to yeah. be. Yeah, they, again, they've got of, like they've they've got a mariachi guy, but his guitar is very small for a mariachi style guitar. And uh, and I have I have heard, ukulele style. I have heard British people refer to black pepper as spicy. Uh, one of the worst <laughs> meals I ever had in my life was. Uh, I think it was Italian food in Ireland. It was it was horrendous. <laughs> this is going to be a four hour show. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. I'm just saying we got a lot in the rundown. I got I'm happy to talk about to international foods. Um, no, we can only talk I, I, about foods from when we've been out of the country and had other styles of food from the country. I'm happy to talk about the Chinese food I had in Mississippi. That was the worst thing I've ever had in my like, life. I went to a German oh. place in Panama that was fantastic. Guys, tertiary cuisine. <laughs> it's almost like we're international. We're participating in international espionage. What we're doing is making ourselves sound much more continental than we are. Certainly myself. You two are a little more continental than I am. Certainly Ryan. Well, I'm not. When I say I had this in Ireland, I never went anywhere else. I just went to Ireland. 
speaking You've been of to London a lot. Hey, I've been to London a lot. Focus up. Speaking of people who need to stop it, our next book, <laughs> King of Spies, number four, story by Mark Miller, Matteo Scalera, art does yeah. the art, refuses to stop, cannot be stopped. This is the uh, final issue of this miniseries, and um, this could, I, I think this could have been a really great miniseries. That's, I, I a, really struggled with it, because I wanted to like it, and it was, it felt like something was just off couple of it. I think there's a couple of problems here. Number one, it's too short. Yeah. Four, four issues really felt more like an outline than, an, than a full, meaty story. And two, I, I've said this before, I think it was, when we first talked about the, the miniseries in general, was that... I think it's a much stronger story if he removes the fantastical elements. And they're not, and they're, well, I guess they are fantastical, but, you know, there was no need for these, were they Brazilian assassins who he maimed when they were young? So one has oh, no arm, one yeah. has no legs, and yeah, they're tied yeah. together as one person. It was very Rick Remendery. Like, there's no need for them. They didn't affect the story one way or another. They showed up and they killed them immediately. And it's just like, if they had grounded this story much more, then I think you have a really compelling. Uh, which story, which is basically uh, old man James Bond, who's dying of cancer, decides to right the wrongs that he helped perpetuate through his career, take out all the people he was never allowed to the the politicians, the really rich guys. Um, it's a really compelling story when you take when you just look at it that way. But then there's, you know, in the beginning he's like jumping off buildings and landing, and he's fine. Like it's just just ground it, just ground it. Yeah. And it's really compelling. But the, the parts of the story that I thought worked best for me were the the really human parts where yes. he is with the the woman that, you know, he, Oh, that was a terrific scene. That was a great scene. Like that was it almost made it pick of the week. It was so good. It was one of the best scenes of the week where he 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 goes back, he needs help, he finds this woman that he knew when he was younger who like he she was an asset basically and he slept with her of course and and so they they're going to have sex again and it's intercut with them as young people having very vigorous young people sex. And then now they're in their late sixties and he can't get an erection and it's his blood pressure. But I didn't, it's all being intercut and it was a very sort of emotional and real human yeah. situation and, and the she, juxtaposition and of the, of them as young people and as old people. And um, her, her powerful. The fact that she's lived a life without him yeah. and he's sort of, he's the one who hasn't really moved on. And so right. like his, feeling of failure in their moment of coitus where he can't perform like he, it hurts him more than it hurts her in a way where yeah. she's very kind to him and like just offers to be there with him and i i thought it was actually like a beautiful human moment that you'd never get in the james bond stories that is a very logical progression of like where those characters would go after the events of you know the, the movie um right. i yeah i really really liked that scene it's just this i think like this is a mini series of missed opportunity like when I heard the pitch, I was like, oh, that's a really good pitch. And then it was like, here's the outline for the Netflix series, because these are all owned by Netflix. All of Mark Miller's books are owned by Netflix. And not really a ton of meat where there there could have been. And then there's just no just take just 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 ground it. Yeah. Just ground it. Yeah. That's but it was beautiful and great action sequences. And I still I still liked reading it. I still had fun reading it. But every every issue I'd go, man, that was so close to being great. Yep. That's kind of where I was at with it too. Yeah, which is a bummer. It was a bummer, but I did like it. I did what like is it. it? What is it with with stories about Britain? You know, whenever, whenever there's somebody who's like rebellious or trying to bring down the system, the story has to end with blowing up Parliament. It's a simple, I guess. Yeah. I don't feel like there's an American equivalent of that. Uh, I mean, it's the Capitol building. We already had that problem. Well, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know how it happened, but Bruno Redondo did two comics this month. He makes good comics. That's like some old school shit. That's some that's some old Kirby shit. Like that, I was I was surprised to see that Bruno Redondo drew did the art for Superman Son of Kal El number nine, the, the second part of the two part Nightwing Superman crossover, Superboy crossover. But strangely, it doesn't really end in a way that makes you feel like you got a two part crossover. It feels like the story's going to keep going. Which it, oh, that was that was the end of it. Yeah, it was really good. Yes. I, like there were some amazing moments in this book. Eh, amazing is probably not not the right word, but I just I read it and I I just thought like I don't know that I like all of the things that are going on here, but the you know he, Taylor has such a, a read on these two characters and Connor you can't be like I don't like this John Kent. I was like I really like the way he writes this John Kent, like <laughs> and and the way that you know 
Dick was there for him. I don't know. It's a Big Brother character, and it's it's hard not to like him. When I always think of one of my favorite Big Brother characters, this is Nishi, is David Krumholtz uh, in uh, Freaks and Geeks. He came back and he told um, Sam Levine, like, because they had the the dad who cheated on them or cheated on the mother, you know, and it was like he showed up for that one episode. And I always think of that. And and this is another one of those great Big Brother characters. But then Lois is also there for it, mm-hmm. you know, and they they sort of like they have this low grade emotional team up. Yeah. You know, and then there's there's a there's a reveal that when John was gone, uh, he had been actually imprisoned in the volcano, and he's like, I which we knew, we knew, that I know that, but he told it to Dick. He's never told anybody that. That's the the point, um, yeah. which I th- I thought was an interesting call. I like uh, Dick says something about this time, and he's like, it's like Damien, how you and I are the only two two people who like him, and I was like, that's awesome. <laughs> you know, yeah, that was- um, <laughs> I think my my favorite sequence was when they drop Dick off the roof, and it cuts to oh. Yes, him him falling comfortably with John flying upward, and then yeah. he John tosses the the scrim stick, and I I'm such a huge fan of Dick's armpit flaps. Always <laughs> <laughs> flying squirrel. Yeah, it's so no, great. Hundred percent. No, that 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 page turn and that top panel was brilliant. It was, it was so like good. That, it Bruno says so Redondo, much about who, both characters in that yeah. moment. And and Bruno Ordano like stepped like I liked him before, but I look. He's really, I, really, really. We've seen good. all that He's through Nightwing, really, but really that good. that's amazing. I mean, yeah. I don't even love his art style per se all that much, but his graphic design and his storytelling yeah. like makes up for it. Like I don't even like now. I'm like, oh no, it's all great, but and, that was brilliant. And Dick's uh, Comics Code Authority T-shirt. They're they're being very. Um, Mr. Miracle with his outfits where he he and Barbara are constantly wearing superhero t-shirts, which I'm fine with, but yeah. that was a, a gag in Mr. Miracle that they're doing it, here. I think it only works if the person doing it's really good. Like yeah. it could be But really also bad. for the character, yes. Dick has been around from the beginning. And he's a little over the the, the he has no ego about it. I guess. Right. Yeah. And I feel like I feel like Barbara does it for Dick. I feel like the thing about the thing I made about, up a whole story in my head. I've got a whole backstory for them. I love I've it. I've got a whole thing going on in my head. The book is just about the two of them, and that's fine. I think Dick is like the most comfortable person in the DC universe. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. He's he's just he's here to he's here to have a good time. He's here for a good time, not a long time, and he's fine with it. He's comfortable in his own skin. He's comfortable in his role. He's comfortable with around everyone. But it's he's, also yes. not. It's it's he's he's still very committed to the right thing. Also, yeah. Like he's like, yeah. well, this is the thing we have to do. I'm not going to stress over it. You know, he right. stresses he stresses way more over the billion dollars thing or the whatever, however much much it was. Yeah. And doing that the right way than he is about the superhero parts. He's ultimately calm in the fights and the whatever. And also what's interesting about it is that it's not a put on like so no. many like Spider-Man's is a put on. It's it's I act this way so that I'm not stressed out by it. And over years, he became more comfortable. But that's still part of it. Like Dick Grayson's thing. He's like, I just I've been there. I've done this. You guys are all lame. I'm not worried about any of you. And I have my fucking uh, uh, logo on the bottom of my soles of my boots. So what are you going to do? <laughs> that was a nice touch. I noticed that. I don't think I've ever seen a Dick Grayson Lois Lane hangout scene before. That's oh, great. They were drawn They're a little great. too close to the same age, I felt yes. like. Well, yeah. How old he is 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 a. I mean, again, if you if you start uh, plumbing the depths of this, you end up in a lot of trouble. <laughs> it, it unravels quickly. Yeah, yeah because we, well, if he's an adult, let's say he's you know he's not in his twenties. He's got to be a thirty-ish year old. No, he's in his twenties. No, yeah. he's in his, yeah, if yeah. you look at no. page, you know, six. I don't know. Like I feel like he's he's, he's in his young late adult 20s. thing. No, late twenties. That's fine. Late twenties, nah, early thirties. That area. No. Yeah, and then she's got to be. She's got to be early 40s. She no. has to be. Again, these are all, they, they de-aged everybody. These characters are younger than you think they are. Um, they, the main guys are in their 30s. They were going to make them older, and they didn't do it. The main people are in their 30s. The psychics are in their 20s. The younger psychics are in their teens. I, th- I, see, I think that when we were kids, things that were in their early, mid-30s seemed old, and now early 40s. Well, I mean, that's just because of your age and you're implying your no, age. I know to, that. Superman people, was always 29 when we were growing up. That was the, the established pe- age in the comics. But the people making these are our age. And I think it doesn't that matter. It's re- irrelevant. Superman was always 29. They aged him up into his 30s. Batman was 33. That's that's the age the characters are. That's way too young. 
because yes. you're older. No, that's what the characters are. That's what they but are. Also, like, also, like, we, we're living in the era of like John Wick and Taken, where like old dudes can still be action stars. So of course they can, but, but again, John, but they're John not. Kent, John Kent is okay. We'll say he's thirteen. No, he's an age. Jonathan Kent, the one in the this comic. Yes, he's he's no, like they, remember he got, 16, he got age. I know. How old was he when, I, I, right. He was like How ten when he, he in went time. away. Well, it's Josh. It's your favorite thing. It's relativistic. There's been re- no, relativity no, 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 no. has occurred. I'm, I'm talking about the time from when Lois had him as a baby to now is how many years? Again, you you just told Ryan not to do this he's because aged. it doesn't know, make any but sense. He's but aged you, but more, that's why, but, Connor, you are positive about the things like this, but it but, doesn't make any sense if you wait, do that. But no, that's, but also, that's exactly, why it doesn't make sense. Josh, comic book in, logic. The, in the interstellar way, so there can be no Jonathan, constants. Jonathan Kent has aged more years in his I life than Lois Lane has aged since she had him. I know. I'm not. But you're asking how old? About that. So I can't. I can't get. So when you say how many years have passed, it's different for the different characters. I want to know what age she became a mother in this, while also being an internationally renowned journalist. She's the same age. She hasn't aged. That's how comics work. That's no. That's insane. Yes, that's how it works. That's how it's always worked. worked. It's not working. Well, they live in stasis. Things happen. Dick Grayson aged from eight years old to thirty. That would be Batman in his sixties. But that's not how it works. That's just your because it's like, comics. Opinion, Everyone man. stays the same age. I only considered a Batman to be like say 10, 12, 10, 13 years older than Dick. Does that seem right? So, so if you have him, so that means then he is in his almost fifty, which is not the case. That's again, you can't apply any of this stuff. The comic characters don't age no matter how be, oh, they don't. It doesn't they don't. matter. Because also, right, what because, you're saying is not objective fact. It's what you used to be. No, no, it is objective because, fact. Because Superman like, was 29 it, years old for the entire run of his Silver Age. Because it didn't matter how what happened to him or how many years Kurt he Long had a relationship. He stayed the same age. They don't age. Man. Characters don't age. It, it's also like the There's thing no that no like, one if, at DC. If Bruce Wayne that was really a person, if Bruce Wayne no, was really I, a person at 50, he would be just as good at being Batman because that's the character. It doesn't matter how old he is. You guys want them to age with you, but they don't. They stay the same age no matter what happens to them. That's how the co- that's All the right. rule in comics. That's how they that's live for your, eighty years. That's just your woke bias <laughs> tainting my comics. I don't want politics in my comics, Connor. I don't want aging up and down of people. Just want- I did say as soon as and I fell into the trap. But at the beginning, I said as soon as you start to exa- and look what happened. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> look, look what happened. Now either people at home are like clapping or they're super uncomfortable. <laughs> Or some combination of the two. That's how I feel. I'm like, this is amazing. I want it to stop. Superman is whatever age I was when you guys met me. Ugh. It was a great <laughs> issue. Like, it was a wonderful issue. Uh, despite many of the things that I don't think I like about the overall thing they're doing. Uh, this, this, it shouldn't go on forever. But, you know, they've really given us some nice moments between these two books that the same guy is writing. And, uh. And Bruno Redondo is a fucking craftsman. Oh, man. Also inked by R- Wade Von Graw Badger. That's yeah. just quality. That's good stuff right there. Thor. I, so I finished reading Thor 749. And I mean, it's all good. But my, I think my problem is for the last decade plus, every Thor story has been rocking the foundations of Thor. And it just gets exhausting. Well, I think that also like when Jason Aaron did it, it was one big thing. It was a soap and, opera. And he brought it to, and it was, yeah, it was an epic. Uh, he, he brought it to a conclusion and then everybody else was like, we'll do it too. And I was like, no, you did that. You got to do a different thing. I mean, this, the, the stories are all good, but like, it's like yeah. every, and I think this is a consequence of the, the, the way comics are made. They're not, they're no more, they're not Claremontian or Wolfmanian soap operas anymore. They're, they're static trade stories. So each one yeah. is sort of lives on its own. And, Every Thor story is t- is Mjolnir isn't what you think it is. Donald Blake isn't what you think it is. Odin isn't who he thinks. It's just like every th- right. story is just. And after a while, it's like it doesn't hit the same way when it's just every arc is yeah s- is but, taking but the Thor apart. What's confusing apart. about that, and and you're you're not wrong, but what's confusing about it is it's really from a craftsman standpoint. No, they're good. This is really a good issue. Well. Right. It's yeah, really no, it's, totally. It's, it's a good looking book. I, I, first page right away, I went, who the hell's this? And it's Nick Klein who's drawn it before, but like he did He's something. I know, but he, but like it's the, the first bit is like sketchy. It it's looks sketchy. like yeah, a flashback, so they make it look different. I yeah. know, but draw like that. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it looked really good. I was so like that 
first page or not first page. I don't say page sequence. two. The first sequence. Yeah, but I mean but that like, first sequence, like that's that's an artist that Rick Remender snatches up. Oh my god, it made me so happy. I was like, oh, this is I couldn't even I can't compare it. Like it gave me a feeling about a time. Like the way that he did the faces that were kind of overwrought. It was you know, and it's how he's learning how to catch Mjolnir. And I was like, I don't, I've never seen this. This is how have I not seen this? You know, and the rest of it was great, but God, that pencily stuff at the beginning, I was way into it. And I, yeah, I think I think you're absolutely right, Connor. Like, I don't buy the thing about Mjolnir being an evil demon thing yeah. that was inside the yeah. I don't buy it. I, I, don't I just like don't. It. Um yeah. I, it doesn't I don't like it. It's not good. I don't like that. They don't they won't just return to start. Yeah. Like, okay, yeah. you did the story. Go back to start. Give him his hammer. He's the one who can pick it up. If he's king of Asgard now, fine. Let him be fucking Thor for a while. Right. Like well, I, I mean, they, like they, they they take everything about Thor and it's it's undermining Thor's I don't heroism. Want imp- I don't want imposter syndrome, Gen X, where do I belong, Thor anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want it. He's fucking Thor. I don't want to understand I don't want to know that Odin had doubts, and that's why he's been an asshole all this time. Right. Odin's an asshole because he's fucking Odin. And he right. gets to be an asshole. Thor likes to drink and cavort. And he's good with a big hammer. And, this is this is us on and on and, and on. In a lot of post-coital Metaphor. Thor situations. It's, it's like Thor cannot get over his impotence. And he keeps yep. going to therapists and he keeps having issues. That isn't... I, I don't need to live out my middle age through Thor. <laughs> You know what I mean? And I'm not. Also, I mean, I just, <laughs> y- yeah, there's like, there's, there. Just to be know. clear. Just, that was the most like male <laughs> thing I've ever done. It's I like, I just want everyone to know I can still get erections. That's not why I'm upset. About he, he keeps, he keeps going to different therapists and none of the therapists will just be like, dude, your dad was an asshole. Let it go. Yeah. Like, l- l- stop trying with him and try with everyone else in your life yeah. and you'll be okay. But they keep hinting towards that. Like he's like, old man, forget it. And then and then Odin gets and they so like Odin that is then becoming uh, I'll go inside. Like, I got daddy issues. But Odin is constantly used to work out this daddy issue that isn't interesting anymore. Like, let him be an asshole. And they, cause it was what happens is the writers keep bringing him back and like they're showing his human side that he was too afraid to talk about it forever. And like, he's not a 50s dad. He's yeah, the king of all he's, gods. He's, he's a fifteen fifties dad. Yeah, like he's not. <laughs> he's not like your dad who fought. Even that's your grandfather too fought modern. In, you know, yeah, Vietnam, and is finally opening up now about all his feelings. He's not that. He's yeah. the guy who would have never said shit about shit. Yeah, I did like. I don't know if we've ever seen Thor go through Odin sleep before, and I thought that was kind of cool. No, I like he that. Been, he's not been the king before. Has he never had the Odin Force before? I, ass- no, I just kind Odin of ass- had the Odin Force. I assumed that at some point there had been a story <laughs> where Thor had been given the Odin Force, and I just hadn't read. I mean, it. Not that I'm aware. I haven't read every Thor comic. Okay, that's, well, that's I, I mean that's a new idea. Credit credit. It still due. irks me that I mean these are new things. The point is like it's but it's it's the same yes theme through all of them. It's this the foundational element of Thor breaks. Donald Blake breaks. Mjolnir physically breaks. Odin breaks. Many times. Asgard breaks. It's just the same. But the the, the Beta Ray Bills hammer broke yeah it's the same story over and over again told really really well yeah that's the hard like if you listen to this, like how was this issue this issue was great yeah it was it was, it was, a, great it was issue. a great issue but afterwards I, I i put i literally put it down and i was like that, that was great why is this so annoying me and it's like oh it's because it's the same thematic mm-hmm. story for the last decade and jason aaron did it he did it yeah. he finished it and it was okay that he did it then because it was only the one time and then you sort of go back to start hit, go back to one and then we keep we're not but then we keep going back to wherever we went after that. When I saw when I saw the redesigned hammer, I immediately felt bad for all artists to follow it, it unless they unless they I, fix I it. I don't want a redesigned hammer again. Yeah. I want the hammer. Like when they broke the hammer again, I was like, again? <laughs> I had to watch it get wrecked in the books. I had to watch it get wrecked in the movie. I had to yeah. like, come on. Let him have it. Let him have the hammer. Like I feel like such like a middle aged white man. Like, why are you changing things? For for people who didn't read the issue, it's like a it's like a wabi sabi gold filigree. Put the hammer back together that was done by Angela and the, the angels of heaven. Which I is, keep I keep forgetting about Angela, and every time she shows up, I'm like, fuck. <laughs> it's not. It doesn't do anything for me. Yeah, no, it's true. Can I can I uh, sl- slide aside? I know it's crazy. Uh, way back when, when I first met Connor, or, or was first sort of becoming friends with Connor at one point, like he said, I had to go sleep the Odin sleep. 
And I was like, and I think I fell in love with you that day. <laughs> because I don't know if I was even reading comics, but I hadn't thought about it. Because I read comics from like 10, 11, 12. And I, I hadn't thought about just the old sleep. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> I think I think when you said that you probably I don't know, you probably don't even remember but it was the thing I you don't. used to say. <laughs> it makes sense that I would have said that. Oh college. my god! Because uh, only exactly. only in college can you truly sleep the Odin sleep. So, oh my god! <laughs> uh, next issue is seven fifty, and it features John Cates and J. Michael Straczynski and Dan Jurgens and Walter Simonson and Jason Aaron. So that's the big anniversary issue next next issue because Marvel has it both ways. Yeah, they do. So yeah, this is Thor Thor seven forty nine. Why would you yeah. want to call it seven forty nine? Seven forty nine is so much better than twenty three. Yeah. <sighs> Fine. Speaking of Norse books, Thor Corner, Norse, <laughs> Norse mythology two number Norse mythology three number two. This is uh, part two of Thor Corner and part two of a Thor story. This is the story of That's right. Thor and Tyr, uh, the god of war, going fishing with a giant so that they can obtain a giant cauldron for making the best brew in all of the Northern realms. I've forgotten first, the first part. I feel like even though these stories have been doing it for all these volumes, maybe they shouldn't, they shouldn't go from issue to issue. Cause I had forgotten the first part totally, but um, have you read, have either of you read the, the prose version of this? No. Okay. No, but I've read every issue of this. See, this I think that mini- that helps. Cause I have like, I have the memory of reading the story in prose, even though it's not a perfect memory, but it's enough to like help me remember the framework and the structure of what's happening. I just thought, but even, even not remembering it, it still was, you know, the second part, it was really good. And the I art thought was the David beautiful. Rubin art was incredible. Yeah. I really, yeah. really loved his art on this. And then the second story with the art from Colleen Doran was also terrific. Um, Hers is more delicate and makes sense because it's Balder's story and Balder's supposed to be the most beautiful god. Yeah, and the, de- the death of Balder is one of my favorite Asgardian myths, uh, you know, uh, Norse myths of in the game. So I just really love that story. Yeah, nothing can hurt him. I had him. a technical issue and was not unable to read this one, so uh, oh, I enjoyed it. It was good. All these books have been good. All these stories have been good. There's that issue of Top Ten where they're at the Norse bar and they keep accidentally mm. killing Balder over and over again. Man, that was... 20 years I don't, ago. I don't remember, no. They're like, at this bar, it's like a, it's a bar sleep. for, it's a bar for all the gods <laughs> in the top 10 universe. And like, it's the Norse gods Ooh. hanging out and they're like, let's play the game where we all throw things at Balder and the cops get called because it's a murder because he's been killed by the mistletoe. But then like after a few minutes, Balder just gets back up because all the stories repeat themselves over and over again. And there's a scene where Listen, one of the, that book was terrific. There's and a scene where one of the cops genius. goes into the bar, into the bathroom and I will never forget that gra- he had like God themed graffiti on the bathroom stalls. And one of them was one God, son, God, rah, rah, rah. And I thought it was the most hilarious thing I've ever read in the comic. And it's, I, I, I hold true to that to this day. Devil's Reign, Moon Knight. I didn't read this one. I read I read regular Devil's Reign, in which we got rid of the two Matt Murdock problem. But uh, I did not read this one. So I read it by accident. I thought about because it. I thought it was just I thought it was just the next Moon Knight issue. <laughs> yeah, and I'm too. not really reading. I'm not really reading most of the Devil's Reign stuff, but then when after I had it, I looked and I was like, oh, it's Jed McKay, let's read it. And it's the interesting thing here is that I don't like Moon Knight. I, really? So I just, I, 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 Which no, is I funny because like you read all of his books. That's, the, that's where I'm getting to. And so yeah. this is, this is my, my thing here is that like, I don't really like this character. I don't really want to watch another one of these guys in prison. Uh, this was really good. <laughs> like, I mean, like, it's the, that's the fact is that like, I really, I, I read Jed McKay's stuff because I'm always kind of impressed by it. He's, he's, he's not really, really exactly good. a Tom, he's not exactly a Tom Taylor, but he's one of the, he's getting to be there in a Marvel sense, I think, where he just gets a really good handle on these characters. And while this is not one of my favorite characters, I, I just think that the, the quality and the imagination of the story that's happening here is, is great. And his characterization of Moon Knight isn't annoying. Like at least there's it's consistent and they're sticking with the thing. And then and then finally, uh Federico Sabatini, it just like the book looks completely different than the regular Moon Knight book. Yeah. And uh I found that very exciting. Um th- th- there was a bit where basically uh he's in there he, he's in the the prison and I think it's a, he's a, he decides that his version of him that comes out when he's in prison is the is it the wild dog, I think. Um, and that becomes the theme of, of the issue and how he works. And like, that's the moon night the world needs at this moment. And I just thought structurally, thematically, it was very, 
strong storytelling. Um, and also there's a lot of really great visual bits in here where they, like, they're constantly going back to the iconography of the mask in interesting ways. Uh, I really enjoyed it. And I liked that he laid out sort of the moral compass of the Marvel universe of just like, I'm not Spider-Man and I'm not the Punisher and that's the yeah. spectrum. I'm something else. And like, to me that actually, if a person said, if I like lived in the 616 and knew all these characters from having lived in this world and someone said that to me, like that would be mm -hmm. scary as hell. Well, and, and that's the thing is like, this character has no uh, superpowers to speak of and he shouldn't be this powerful or this, this, you know, proficient but I bought that he is in this. And that's the thing. Like, I, you know, if you've ever been around somebody, if you've ever been around a person who's like off, you know, in a way mm -hmm. that you can't quite put your finger on, like it's eerie. And I think Jed McKay, it's, it's unsettling. That's a perfect word for it. And I think Jed McKay captures that feeling better than a lot of the more recent Moon Knight comics I've read. I agree. I want to just tie this back to what, what the three of us were talking about before the show started. Josh, you're like the guy who eats pizza every day for lunch, is, is literally eating pizza, is talking with his mouth full and says, I don't really like pizza. You like pizza. <laughs> you like Moon Knight. You've read I don't. the last four Moon Knight series. Because they all had people I liked. I really liked the one... If somebody was on Moon Knight and I didn't like the person working on it or I didn't like I would drop it immediately. But the fact is the people who have been working on it have been doing intriguing things with it and that could be enough to keep reading it. But I don't read him out of course. I think oh, I want. Just... I think I want to like Moon Knight, but I don't generally because I don't like the crazy part. I don't like the multiple personality thing. It's also who did it before this? Who did it before this? God, there's been there was there was I, the, there was that great series with the, the guy the, and the other guy. I there was that really great series with, that Jason Burroughs drew, yeah, and it was yeah. by the guy who had been in the rock band Max. Yep. What's his name? Yeah. Max. That Thomas. was just that was just fantastic. Yeah. Then there was a bunch of them that were okay. You know, the the Brian, not Brian, was Warren Ellis and Declan Chavi came out and they introduced this new version, and that was really good and sort of visually arresting. And obviously, we're still seeing that. Then they moved into Smallwood, and you had you had Brian Wood for a little bit, and then um, Jeff Lemire. And I didn't read any of those; I just looked at them. Jeff Lemire was with Smallwood. Yeah. No, I swear Brian Wood did some of them. I I, I just saw this week there was a collection released, the Jeff Lemire Greg Smallwood Moon Knight collection, and I almost got it because I wanted it. To see it, so I don't know. I think maybe, maybe he did both. Maybe he was, maybe Ellis. he did both of them. He did. No, he did. Yeah. No, Brian. You had Warren Ellison and Brian Wood, which was like a. No, I mean, I mean, damn. Smallwood must have drawn both both the runs. He did. Yeah, he did. Okay. Yeah, he drew. Okay. He drew the Brian Wood ones first, and I read the first couple, and I was like, I'm not interested in this, but I looked at it because I was like, Who the fuck is this guy? And then Lemire took over, and I never read that. Okay. You like you like Moon Knight. We all know it. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna buy you only Moon Knight. <laughs> material from now on for every Christmas and holiday well you really like Moon Knight no my friend just buys them for me out of spite and I don't Moon Knight like statues away. Moon Knight uh, action figures and the, the image the iconography of Moon Knight is great I do like I always love the way it looks I just I'm very looking forward to the TV show the, like the bright white Batman it's cool it's a cool idea uh, Naomi season 2 number 1 it's the same creative team from the first series Brian Bendis David Walker Jamal Campbell Wes, Ga Wes Abbott and I wanted to mention this only because I need this series to make me care about Naomi. Yeah. I read the first series. It was fine. It was fun. Then she joined Young Justice, and now she's a member of Justice League, basically whatever Brian Bendis is writing. I even gave her TV show a try. I, I, I bailed out after a couple of episodes because it was boring. I, didn't know that I need a reason. And what I mean is they got to tell a really compelling story. And right now it feels like with this first issue, it's the same story from the first book. Which is just she's in her hometown. She's got her family and her and the guy at the tattoo shop, and they're training her. And so far, nothing compelling about her exists. And I need something to happen. Well, I know what you're saying, and I agree with you. I think it's just a fish out of water character. But you know, like it's a, it's you know Kyle Rayner or Wally West or whoever, except she's Naomi. And um, yes, but. I think the other side is that I think the art in this is fantastic. No, it's beautiful. I like no, no, I know that. I'm just saying, like, if you were to do anything, like Jamal Campbell was a good artist, and I think I think there's been a level up here in some way. Um, and I did find myself intrigued by the story of what's going on with her dad because it started off kind of like big deal, and yeah. then at the end of it, it was kind of interesting. I don't think you're going to get what you want, though. I know that's the thing is like I'm I feel like they're setting up this mystery with her dad, and I I love Bendis. I've read. Bendis for years I've read all his indie stuff I've read the stuff he drew 
but it's gotten to the point where when Bendis sets up a mystery, I don't have the confidence that I used to that it's going to pay off in a satisfying way. Agreed. Well, there's the closet. That closet hurt. I mean, I know you guys made a joke of it, but like it's it's you know that there's there's a there there's a there there. It's not a joke. We're deadly serious about the closet. Okay. Well, then 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 there's a there there, and the fact that it was never paid off is a problem. And that's kind of what I think about whenever he sets up a mystery. I'm just kind of like, well, is this going to be the closet? Like, are you going to lose interest? And I'm never going to find out the end of the story. And I'm not saying this. I I, I like this issue. I like the first miniseries. I'm just saying they need to tell a story where at the end of it, I go, shit, Naomi's awesome. As opposed to, that was a good book. But why is she in the Justice League? Other than because Ben just created her. You know, like. I don't think, that's the thing I don't think you're going to get. Because I right. don't think that you're going to think I don't maybe somebody thinks she's awesome and maybe that's what he's going for. He's not trying to make you think she's awesome. And maybe that's a problem. Going back to that Bendis thing in the closet. I'm sorry. I feel like it's been long enough. I need to explain it. Uh, <laughs> Bendis, Bendis killed Hawkeye in secret. Not like this. No. Uh, Avengers Bendis disassembled. It, disassembled. OK. And then brought him back in. Avengers number 27, 28. This is a long time ago. And the idea was that he showed up in Wanda Gore. He had sex with Scarlet Witch. Wanda, yeah. Uh, she wakes up and looks in a closet and is like, oh, it's her, right? Not him. Yeah, it's her, yeah. And freaks out about something in the closet, and that's the end of the issue. And it was we never, see ever, the, ever, We ever, see ever, the ever POV from inside the closet, so we don't know what she's looking at. And she gasps. And, right. Yeah. Now, whatever. That's fine. What? bothered me about it and again we made this into a joke but what's true is that he would didn't address it and wrote it off as like ha ah, it's a silly thing and i think that's bullshit i would have rather have heard like yeah it's a thing I, I dropped it and so we just let it be but it wasn't that and what i think that he has a tendency to do and i don't blame him for it because it's worked out for him is to go it's comic books we'll just we'll let it go away and that's okay for some things, but not in terms of like having a compelling story. I think like he can lean on the idea of it being an ongoing thing and then leave some things that he didn't quite have worked out and move along. I think that's what's going to happen. I, th- I think someone needs to pick it up. Someone should tell the story mm-hmm. of the closet now. In a, I mean, in a grand it's kind of tradition. amazing that no one did that. Yeah. If you think about it, he's not there anymore. Yeah. And oh just, just, just so everyone, everyone understands the, the length to which we did this, because people who came on recently may, may not know this, uh, we used to we used to be att- attend all the Marvel press conferences back when we did the website full time, <laughs> and and every Marvel press conference that Bendis was in, when there was a final question, and it's usually Ron because he was the, he would do the Bendis ones. Ron would ask about the closet to the point where Bendis would go, would the PR guy would go, okay, final questions, and Bendis would go, okay, Ron, ask me about the closet, because every time we would ask him. So what's in the closet? And he just wouldn't. And people started bugging him on Twitter, and we didn't. We didn't advocate that, and I don't want people to do that. Uh, but it's just like, what is in the closet, man? Come he on. got annoyed by it at a certain. Point. Yeah, he did. Oh, at first, he was yeah, amused by it, sure. then he got annoyed by it. And I don't. I, it's been so long. I don't. I don't. You know, just don't. He's not even at Marvel anymore. Don't even worry about it. No, no, and it's not even about the thing. It's about the fact. No, I'm just talking about people. I want people hounding him on Twitter. Oh yeah, no, t- definitely not. No, it's it's it's. Uh... Yeah. It's All long right. gone. So he's, anyway. he's put some doubt in us. Is the point? Yeah. I just want. I just want. I want to really love Naomi as a character, and they just haven't given any reason yet. That's all I'm saying. Fair. Uh, I just wanted to touch base real quick with Mighty Morphin number seventeen. This is the new story by Matt Groom picking up where Ryan Parrott left off, and um, I wasn't sure if I was going to stick with this book just because it was a new creative team. But I have to say they put together a really compelling first issue of their arc and um, set forth an interesting challenge where the command center has been destroyed. And so if any damage happens to the morphing grid underneath, the, the rangers will lose their ability to... No, no, there's nothing to, going on. I'm morph. just doing the show right now. No, this part's not important. <laughs> and, I'll, be, um, I'll be down in a second. So they it's have to okay. split the team up because they find out that the command center they Did had... Did you say the morphin grid? Yeah. Uh, what is they, that? Uh, it's not important. I'm just telling it's the like a power grid. I'm just telling the viewers what they needed to know to follow the story. Um, They're not so, viewers. So they 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 find out that the command center they had is actually a standard design, so they can just go to another planet and teleport one home. So half the team goes to do that, and part of the team stays home to defend the grid against people who now realize that the rangers are vulnerable. And yeah, so far so good. So that's all I want to say. In my old apartment, I would have taken this time to go make a cup of tea because the kitchen was next to where I recorded, but not anymore. Listen, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't claim any corners or outhouses. I just told people what's happening in the world of the Power Rangers. I like, I like that this episode's been spicy. I like it. 
It's, we don't get spicy that often. Well, I'm I mean, liking it. I'm you, enjoying when you start, it. I mean, when you start with a London taco, you can only get spicier from there. <laughs> those are the books we want to talk about. Those are the comics we, we read and had wanted to discuss. But at <laughs> patreon.com slash ifanboy, every patron can add a vote to add a book to the rundown. That's called the patron pick. Every patron gets the opportunity. And this week, the overwhelming favorite by a three to one margin over the number two book was Punisher number one from Jason Aaron, Jesus Says, Paul Azaceta, Dave Stewart, Corey Pettit. And I, I, I have, I, I'm of so many minds about this and it's frustrating. Um, so, okay. so the backstory of this is many extremist fringe groups have taken the Punisher symbol as their own and not, and not so extremist. There's some, there's some mainstream adaptation or adoption as well. Well, it depends on what your point of view is. Um, yeah. And so they they've they've taken Punisher off the grid for a while. Now he's back, and here he has been chosen to lead the hand. And he has a new logo, and he fights with swords instead of guns. And he is a ninja now. And it was all very competently done. The art was great. I love, especially love the pause set of flashback opening, cold open. Jason Aaron has written the Punisher a lot. He has he he knows the character from a pure craft point of view. This was a fine issue. I hated everything about it. I hate capitulating to bullies. I hate saying, well, they did. They took our thing, so we'll let them have it. I hate it. If only Marvel was owned by a, a, a corporation that had a history of being very litigious against people. Right. I hate their IP. capitulation. I hate, I hate it. And I hate that they're changing this character who's been around for so long because of a bunch of assholes. And they made the character demonstrably worse. Okay, the, the, therefore, the universe is demonstrably worse. I just hate it. I hate and, it. And for people who want more context on the issue, there's a good 99% uh, Invisible episode that go that has a lot of Jerry Duggan talking about his feelings on what has happened, and it it all predates this issue coming out. Oh, but really? I yeah. I'd, I'd listen to that. I'd know about that. That's you should. Good. It's good. Um. So that said, I, I get what you're saying. Uh, and I remember if we go way back to the Marvel Knights days, I don't remember who did it, but it Wasn't basically it? turned Ven- Punisher into an avenging angel. Yeah. Yeah. Was, who wrote that? That was terrible. I'll look it up while you talk. Is that Ennis? It's considered to be... No. Ennis came on and did like the... the he did the Back to Basics. Okay. Yeah, he did the, the Max who, series. Who, him, and, him and Dylan... No, not Max. Uh, it, it was, it was regular Punisher, Punisher, and then it went to Max later. Okay. Right. Um, I mean, he created Max is what it, what it was. But either way, like that was the when they did that last movie it was that but they didn't do it well this is a much better produced piece of work than that was and so, right, so sorry it a, was uh it was good. christopher golden and uh-huh. thomas e sinagowski and it was penciled oh. by bernie wrightson oh oh wow that's interesting yeah and it was not a good story. yeah he was in a, he, he had died and he came back as a vigilante angel character Taken on its own, though, and taking all that context out of it, like I didn't hate this story. No, it was I, fine. I, I totally agree. It was really well done. I think, you know, you spend the whole time going, why is he doing this? And then at the end, like the explanation for why he's doing this, and this is your spoiler, is that they have brought back his dead wife, you know, and she the has, has been yeah. revived, and she's got bullet scars, which I thought was a really wonderful, um, you know, it's a very Jason Aaron choice. Very Jason Aaron. Uh, you know, like, and that was the, I went, okay, that makes sense that why he'd do that. Like, that makes sense why he'd do that. And it makes, you know, I did think, you know, he had kids. That was good. Uh, that was my thought. <laughs> I was like, what about the kids? <laughs> because, you know, I have kids and, you know, just the wife. Uh, I mean, it sounds like a nice vacation, but I, you know, I feel like I'd have a hard time being like, oh, we can sleep together now because your kids are dead. Uh, so maybe as we've established in this episode, like Josh has still got it. It's, if it. God, I hate that I said that. <laughs> I said it. As a, I said it like as a joke, but now it sounds not like a joke. And uh, anyway, here we are. I <laughs> like, like I couldn't tell you. Like, no, I was only kidding. You're like, whatever, dude. Yeah, you know, fanboy um, Wikipedia page. Canonically, it was episode 820. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, if you're gonna have something in your wiki. Um, 
I, I got to tell you how much I did enjoy the splash page of all the different images of the Punisher. Oh, that was Over terrific. That was great. Yeah. And that was one of the best page turns of the week. I just like, oh, I'm looking at this forever. I was like, there's Yeah, Dylan, so the opening the opening was a flashback to the you know his family getting shot. I thought it was great because it was also very disorienting and a lot of close-ups and great Paul Esseta art. And then you yeah, turn the page good. and it's this double page, history, basically history of the Punisher from... Uh, his first appearance cover it was shot. Also, it was also so, it was also a little disorienting because like I knew this was the issue where they were getting rid of the symbol, and so like to have that page turn and just be like blast you in the face with all of the cool art iterations of the different ways they've drawn it over the years. I was like, well, this is a weird way to like both lean in and lean out. Um, I thought, yeah, oh, yeah. the Mike Zach and even the Jim Lee stuff looks so great here. And I think there's a Goran Parlov here. Brad oh yeah, Street. there definitely is. Yeah, from the Vietnam story. Yeah, that was... and uh, oh. yeah. Okay. yeah. I, again, I don't really like Punisher all that much. John Romita Jr. Uh, and there's a lot of Steve Dillon. Yeah, it's so good to look at. Who drew the earliest ones? The Jerry Conway written. Tim Bradstreet's on cover. Uh, uh, anyway, anyway, it just made me so happy. It was just like here's comic book history. I was like, oh yes. <laughs> did I say I said Jerry Duggan earlier when I was talking about NIPA? I meant Jerry Conway. I misspoke. Jerry Conway. Oh, okay. That makes a lot more sense. Sorry about that. Thank you, Josh. I thought they just found a random comic. No, book. no, not you, random, you, but yeah, you know, you did. Yes, thank you for correcting me on that. It's a, it's an understandable mistake. So you know, I thought it looked great. Um, Jesus Saez, I'm pronouncing it wrong. I'm sure he's like a jack of all trades. Like he can kind of do anything. He can do a lot of styles. Yeah. And depending, on, it always kind of looks like him, but also kind of looks like nobody. And depending on how they produce it, I think the coloring in this which is a kind i wouldn't normally like i think worked really well it gave it a lot um, of texture it dave stewart reminds, yeah yeah but it reminds me of um oh god he died recently and he did corbin richard corbin it reminds mm-hmm. me it was produced to look like richard corbin work but drawn by uh size what's interesting is if you told if you if you didn't tell me who did this i would never in a million years see this was dave stewart yeah yeah you know i didn't i actually didn't no, because I, I didn't remark on it, so I wouldn't. Wow, which, which, by the way, how talented is that guy? Right, that he can he can switch because he norm, you know norm, he's got a he's got a thing he does, and it's so good that why would you want to do something else? But I think I think Dave Stewart Stewart's um, legend status is well established. I know, but he just added to it in in my opinion. Yeah, it's Look great. This shot on on there's a double page spread with the helicopters coming in page seventeen in your digital readers. You know, like look at the coloring and the mist and the. And the contrast of the greens and the red, and then he's that stark black and white in the middle. Like, yeah, you know, visually is I can, now I see why it's Dave Stewart. Like, he's the guy who can do that stuff. But it kind of works with the art and the composition too. I also I, I gotta say, like, it felt like felt like a good Jason Aaron story. Yeah, you know, again, take out the context of anything. I wasn't really thinking about any of that other stuff when I read it. And Connor's not wrong, but. I enjoyed it, and I no, I, I, like I said, as a story, like take away, it's a good story. Yeah, it's it's one of the better Jason Aaron stories in a while. Yes, he really yes. writes the Punisher. I mean, you, you, oh, just you know, I'll call you out here. You said, oh man, Jason Aaron again, but the thing is, he writes the Punisher really well, and this he is does. no different. Yeah, I, and again, I don't mean Jason Aaron again. I just no, no, I, get, I I totally understand. You're like, wait, when, he's coming back to Punisher because it'd be like a right because most of the time the people, Punisher. they do their thing on it and then they go away. Yeah. And because they did their thing, and sometimes they come back, and you know, good. But uh, yeah, no, he 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 did the thing. Paul has a setup. I forgot about him. He's awesome. Oh, he's so good. He's been over at at least for a while. He was doing that uh, Kirkman the, book and image. Yeah, so yeah, he's the, the, the that. Cinemax show. But the I mean, the opening was just so visceral. Mm-hmm. You know, and this people complain about retelling origins, and I, I don't necessarily, but this is a great way to do it. Where you you know, it's 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 from a different point of view. It's literally Frank's point of view. You know, like he's. He's, it's it's the flashes of imagery. The the EMTs, the cops, his his bloody hand reaching for his wife, his wife full of bullet holes, and it was very very, you know, raw. And then you cut to the, it, the you know the history of Punisher, and it's you know, it, it's just a great storytelling. Yeah, and it's it's not like a. It's funny whenever whenever Marvel does something like this, it always looks like someone with not great Photoshop skills is put together montage <laughs> very quickly, but the power of the art within it was so good that I didn't, you know, I was like, Nope, it made me feel a thing immediately. And you can stare at it. I could stare at this longer than I spent reading many of the books that I read this week. And it's just this little history of comics. So yeah, no, it's, it's, and I, like, again, I, you know, I saw the, the, the symbol on his, his chest there as he goes and becomes the avenging angel and his swords. And I went, Oh, he's with the hand. 
you know, and and so that that made sense to me in comic book terms. I just I think it's about as well done as you could make it. But also, I would also think of this as a temporary thing. Like, make it for this miniseries or whatever, but don't keep it like this. But that's, I don't know that that's going to happen. Yeah, so I think this is another five issue miniseries. It would be great if all of the trucks ended up with the hand thing on their, <laughs> on their trucks instead. I would buy that. I would be like, oh, okay, yeah, that works. <laughs> then they switch back in here and we get our comic back. Let's, this is, this is going to be interesting. Let's do ratings on Punisher number one. Ratings. Ratings. I don't want to go first. <laughs> I will. I will. I'm, I'm, I'm rating this on a, on a reading experience of the craft of the work and how much I enjoyed reading the story and uh, versus my expectations. I don't expect to like Punisher stories usually, so I'm going to go 4.25. I'm going to give it a four and a zero. Mm. Feels like a <laughs> So <laughs> average that. <laughs> that would be average that out to... I feel like if I did that, you could say, you can't do that. <laughs> two. That's a two. That's a two. <laughs> no, it isn't. It's a zero. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> zero is powerful. What's the middle between zero and four? It's two. two. It's not a middle. You The average of four and zero is zero. The median between yeah. zero and four is two. Statistically. Is I think so. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. Isn't the median between four and one two? I don't think so. I don't know math. No, it'd be this is statistics. between this four is and one would be two and a half. We don't have PhDs on here a lot, so I'm going to go ahead and resolve myself, recuse myself. Oh, you know what, Josh? I meant to tell you. I thought about this last night. Um, you really oh. called me out the other another, the other episode. I think it's Dr. Hout for the rest of the episode for you. He did? What did I do? <laughs> you, got real, show. you got real salty about me. And uh, so, yeah, you, as far as I'm concerned, People I am do- always I am, are like, I am Dr. Haupt to you. Connor, you can still call me Ryan. <laughs> Fuck off, Ryan from Santa Cruz. <laughs> uh, 3.75 for me. This is a fun episode. <laughs> it was I'm enjoying my GPA. it. I'm enjoying the show. It's 3.86. Those are the books we're going to talk about. Patreon.com slash iFanboy. Everyone can vote to add a book to the rundown. Let's talk quickly about how you help support the show. We're already long. I'm not surprised. We did 20, 10 minutes in the beginning of the show on... I don't even remember anymore. Uh, Patreon.com slash iFanboy. Uh, that's the main way to help support the show. Um, you can unlock content for everybody. You can become part of a great community. We have monthly hangouts. We have a Discord server. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. We have our stretch goals. And last week we told you about the media explode and how we fell below that stretch goal. And so the media explodes were in jeopardy. We have gone back above it. So probably comfortably enough that we'll definitely have a media explode this month. Going forward, we'll have to keep our eye on it. But uh, you can probably look forward to a media explode now, considering uh, that we've got above it. So thanks to everybody who supports the show through that. Everybody who, and we have heard from a lot of people who wanted the media explode enough to either Join up or to up their contribution, and so we're a group of stalwarts, good people, true yes. and loyal all. So now we have to come up with some topics. Fanboy.threadless.com is our T-shirt store. You can also get those designs and other things, but we have mainly a T-shirt store. And we have twelve designs. They're all dumb jokes from the show. We all love them. Josh is currently wearing his GDAT shirt right now. Right now. And so, um, if, what does that mean? It's a dumb inside joke. And if you know, you know. It's so dumb. And so our it's not even a joke. I don't know what it is. So there you go. Those are all there. I have I, I own several of them, and uh, I love them all. I found what slash support. I think I must own them all. I must own one of each. I found what slash support. That's our PayPal tip jar. And if anyone who wants to, doesn't want to be a patron but wants to help the show out, doesn't want to buy a T-shirt, is an eccentric billionaire. Maybe you own a baseball team, and you just got a favorable favorable um, uh, deal yesterday. And you have a little extra cash, uh, you can throw it in fmbo.com slash support. And finally, fmbo, no, not finally, fmbo.com slash Amazon. That's our link for the Booksplode uh, books. And there's also a general link there. And finally, bookshop.org. Uh, we partnered with them. And you can find those links on appropriate posts, usually just the Booksload posts. But if you want to help local bookstores, uh, that's the best way to do it. That's how I order my books now is through bookshop.org. Uh, it, you can just need a shop to support, or you can just go into the general fund to help support local bookstores, uh, locally owned small bookstores and so those are, it's a great organization those are all the ways you can help support the show we thank everyone who does that and again patreon.com slash fanboy is the best way to help because if you give it the five dollar higher level you get a superpower live on the show your own patron superpower that hopefully is not a repeat of a previous one but sometimes is because it's, there's been like 800 of them did i do that we've all done it oh, i've okay. done it we've I all repeated several times that's fine well we all it was once our... you did it three times in a row remember you gave you gave a guy four powers yes <laughs> 
Yeah. Well, that's what I was saying to Ryan earlier is that people will talk to me about things I said on the show. And I was like, oh, I don't remember what I said on the show. <laughs> I have no recollection. Like somebody said the other day, somebody quoted something I said on the show. And I was like, that sounds familiar. And I didn't know what it referred to. And it was when I was talking about my dog. And it was like, no one liked him in person. And I went, what is that? I had to think about it for like a long time. Yeah. Anyway, um, Sea Bear. <laughs> they got mixed up. <laughs> whom, whom I'd like to hug. They got mixed <laughs> up. <laughs> Seems. All right. Uh, sea Bear can speak to people and be generally interested in what they're talking about. Wow. <laughs> That's huge. <laughs> like, across the board. Like, even if they're talking about like, sports? Just whatever it is, he can be genuinely, he's engaged, he, he wants to know what they have to say, uh, they come away from it. Also, when he walks away from conversations, he doesn't think, oh my god, what an asshole I am. It's none of that. Seabird can be genuinely interested. Now, he doesn't stay, gen- somebody doesn't come in and talk to him about you know, the traffic on a bridge in their part of town for a while and how it's rushing. He doesn't walk away and stick with it. But at the time when the person is talking to them, he is interested in it and the person feels that engagement and it makes them very happy. So Seabridge is a nice person. Yeah, but it's like a fant- it's a fantasy. He's like Ted Lasso. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Fantasy. <laughs> he's like he's con- he's constantly being like, you just met a really cool person. Yeah. Think and think how happy that makes him. Yeah, as wow. opposed as opposed to say the opposite. No self loathing. I, I feel like I'm talking about myself now. I don't think I meant to. Jonathan Breen, um, his and this might be a duplicate, but I don't care. Jonathan Breen, his superhero name is Brain Freeze because he can in, he can instigate brain freeze and control its intensity. In, in himself anyone. or others. Okay. In himself and anyone else. He, why would he do it himself? Well, if he got brain freeze, he could right. lower it. He can bring it oh. down. Do other animals get brain freeze? Why are you asking us? I don't know. <laughs> ask we ask asked one of you your that. nerd friends. Now I'm thinking about like intracranial vascularization. And That's a topic for your own podcast. Right, there you go. I, I would, Do animals I would get say, brain freeze? Based on no knowledge, but we're all basically constructed the same. They must. But what other Unless, what animals eat food that's that much colder than their what body? What animals tent? are eating well, ice right, cream? So, so that's the bit. Like, if you're an animal who is in the Arctic and you're used to being, you know, cold, frozen shit all the time, probably less so because of, you know, evolution. But if you gave, like, if you gave, like, like an ice cream cone to, like, a howler monkey in Thailand, yes. There you go. I like that. Uh, howler monkeys, New World monkey, don't live in Thailand, but I see where you're going. You know what I'm saying. I did that before. <laughs> they also, I, I, I also, don't know where monkeys live. Experimentally, Arctic foxes, they have not been able to experimentally get them to shiver. They cannot get that animal cold enough that it ever even shivers, which is incredible. I think that's amazing. Yeah. That is an amazing fact. Thank yeah. God we have you here. How many schools years did you have to go to to get that? <laughs> that was something I learned pretty late in the PhD <laughs> process. I'm not going to lie. I, I had to get through most of it before. Oh, I he's knew. a doctor, everyone. Listen up. <laughs> Ooh, a oh, everyone listen to the big doctor. Listen, don't date a doctor. We're famously poor. Um, that's, a Zoid, um, that's a Zoidberg quote. Leon Landrum. Right. I have not looked to see if right, Connor, we, we get it. You want to move it along. It's fine. Um, Liam, Liam Landrum. I haven't looked up to see if this is a duplicate power or not, but are you guys familiar with the Reddit? Am I the asshole thread? Yes. Yeah. So Leon Landrum, whenever he's in a disagreement with anyone, the person who is the asshole starts to glow and they keep glowing until the situation <laughs> is resolved. What if he's the asshole? He glows? Yep, he glows yep. until the situation is resolved. So, like, it <laughs> doesn't matter who. It could be, it could even be with, like, a, a world leader, you know, like some sort of a foreign invader. Uh, if he got in an argument with them about whether or not what they were doing was right, they would glow, and they would glow continuously, and the intensity would increase uh, until the situation resolved itself. It's like Diana's lasso of truth. Yeah, exactly. That is definitely not a repeat, okay. and I think that's the best one you've ever done. Thank so, you. If he talked to Sea Bear at a party, then he probably would glow. Well, Sea Bear is, is. I feel like Sea Bear's power not, would actually would actually cancel out anyone glowing because Sea Bear no is such be a, ass, no one would be the asshole. Sea Bear situation. is such like a genuinely positive influence in any environment that they're in, and it's it's subjective to the person that Sea Bear is talking to. So in that instance, they're not the they can't be the asshole. Neither neither person no, is being could, the asshole because Liam is being genuine and, and talking about what they're interested in, and Sea Bear right. is being genuine. So like the fact that they're both being genuine means that nobody's being the asshole. It's the um, here's how Sea Bear could get into trouble. Okay, he's out there. He's at a party. He spots Marjorie Taylor Greene and she's telling him a bunch of shit. And he's like, really? Yeah, I never saw it that way. A little video of that goes up. Sea Bear's canceled. (laughs) Okay. I don't think we have time for questions. (laughs) I don't think we do either. 
But contact.fanboy.com is the email for the audience questions and also for the media explode. If you're writing it for the media explode, please put it in the title. But thanks to those who've written in, and we're sorry we had to skip the questions. But we had a long time in the beginning about again, what was it in the beginning? None Food? Of, I don't but literally none of us remember. <laughs> no, I do. Because I'm going to hear about it. <laughs> From who? One time I made oh, a joke. That that that's right. That one worth. time I made God, a joke about. It. I made a joke about Alan Rickman being an ugly man on what? Twitter. That's insane. He's, he's a weird looking dude. No. I just what I said was I actually remember the context. The context Bill Clay was, himself. That lady in Love Actually would not be super attracted to that man. And he's the very next charming. morning, he's extremely charming. And he's a great actor, and I miss him dearly. And that's not the point. I said, I made one hand, offhand. I had a thought, wrote it on Twitter, lost my and job. And that is the no. downfall of Twitter. That's why, that's why, that's that's why, why people's no. lives from out from under yeah. them. Not the point. The point is, I woke up in the morning, and there were a group of women in the UK who were like all Alan Rickman super fans, and they all fucking came after me with reckless abandon. Yeah. They were so angry at me, and I did not know that there were large groups of angry Alan Rickman super fans. And it was weird. So, yeah. And that's why everyone should be off Twitter. Isn't is there? Is there there's a famous person married to one of the secondary or tertiary Hemsworths, right? <laughs> well, she's for gonna come a while. That's my point. For a while, Miley Cyrus was. I don't even know why Liam. I know these things. Yeah, her and Liam. Yeah, there you yeah. go. But they're not married. Well, they like up. we're at the age where we're annoyed that we know who Miley Cyrus. I hear is. she comes in like a wrecking ball. I'm not annoyed. Oh, she's terrible. a terrible. You are a dad. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I have dad powers now. How are we? Okay, so here's the sp- here's the sp- the plugging part of the show, the part that everyone tunes out for. We had here's shows that came out in the last month. We had a lot of extra shows in the past month. We've had, I think, one every week. It's been a lot. So been eight shows in the last eight weeks. Uh, so we had Josh's Talksplode, Will Dennis Part Two, the 100th episode of Talksplode. Good job, Josh. Hey, congratulations. Thanks. I didn't do all of them. You didn't do all, of them, but you did probably 90 of them. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So part two of his Will Dennis interview chunk in the first quarter or so. Yeah, uh, I was on the first one. That was the Paul. No, the first one was um, the first one was Remender. No, no. The first one was a name you would be surprised to know. Okay. Uh, It's it was the guy Ron really liked that image. Oh, Jay Ferber. Ferber. Jay Ferber. Go read Next Wave to find out why all these things are called Splode. Anyway, uh, Talksplode 100 Will Dennis part two. Also, we had Jimsky. Books. Jimsky said something was splode. It was well, it came from that? it came from Next Wave. Jimsky said it in his column. We took it as a branding for the website, and that's the okay. history. And if people who know what we're talking about know what we're talking about. Other people are like, those words don't make any <laughs> sense <laughs> when you put them in a row. Book splode. Uh, the New Teen Titans. The Judas Contract. Josh and I just talked about two, uh, two weeks ago. A lot of fun discussing that. Spent a lot of time talking about George Perez and why he's so good in that book. And then just a couple of days ago, we had the special edition review of The Batman in which uh, Mike Romo and our buddy Hank Nazarbach talked about it. And I thought it was a really good discussion. It was almost an hour long. And uh, we had a really good time talking about that. And also the bad behavior at Hank's theater. It's been a long time on that as well. Coming up, this per- this week is our review of Catwoman Hunted. Oh. Ryan is on that show. And Paul Montgomery is on that show, the Animation Brain Trust. We just, we recorded it like three weeks ago, but because we had so many shows, it got bumped. It's coming out this week. It's the most recent DC Universe animated original film. Boy, was And it. then the week after that, so you're still getting a show every uh, every week. A week after that is will be now the media explode because we got back above the level. It'll be our pre-Oscar show. It won't be the whole show. But part of the show will be about the Oscars. And that will be coming out in two weeks. And then I think in – are we in March? April. Yeah. Oh. In April, I think we're going to have a book explode and a talk explode so we get back on schedule. I am recording my talk explode next week. Right. So, so you'll be all set. You'll be ahead of the yeah. schedule. Yeah. I think we're going to do it's the March talk explode, though, technically. Right. That's what we're going to get back on schedule. We're going to get back on schedule. And, and then I think we're going to do a contract with God. The three of us are going to do the book explode on that. So that'll be all coming out at some point. I did do most of these talk explodes. Speaking of book explodes, my podcast, Science Sort of, we just recorded. Uh, we're calling it. Uh, science order book club we did a hail mary episode where we just discussed the book project hail mary by andy Ware. i know book and a book i know both of you have read loved it and we, yes. we just had a really good discussion about it with uh, joe and tim so i'm looking forward to putting that out i i saw in doing that discussion i stumbled across the casting announcement for rylan grace would either of you like to guess who they have cast as rylan grace 
I'm assuming it's not Matt Damon. Matt Damon. No, not Matt Damon. <laughs> not even not, Ryan Gosling. It is Ryan Gosling. I was gonna say not even a Matt Damon type. Well, you got it in two, Connor. That's incredible. Wow, that is. We Thank we you. decided that casting was wrong and think that Charlie Day would be a much better Rylan Grace. Well, the thing is, no, I think Ryan Gosling. Too if you, funny. If you, Ryan Gosling can be very funny and manic. If you've seen the other guy, or the what was that? Movie? I have seen the other guy, Russell Crowe. Nice guys. There's, Nice guys. Yeah. Incredibly funny and manic in that movie. I don't think of Rylan Grace as manic. Or particularly he's a little bit manic. funny. I see him as sort of quiet and awkward and then getting excited. To, I just, this is, this is, he's not, he's not the, the best character in that it. novel. I think we all know who the best character is, but we can't say it yeah. because it's a spoiler. Yeah. No, don't. So yeah, that's what's coming up in my world. Rick Remender was on so many talks blows. Yes, he was on a lot. It's absurd. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I was reading through the talk explodes. Say, so listen, you can find all of these shows over at ifanboy.com as well. All the ones that I'm talking about, I'm looking through. If you go over to podcast slash audio slash special edition, you will see all of these uh, talk explodes that we have done over the years. And I forgot there was a period where I was doing like, I was doubling up. I was like, all right, I did two and three people at a time about making comics. I'm very proud of that work. Um, but all these people who had been on the show. Anyway, that's all there. And all the old writing is there. You can search Jim Ski's things and find the first instance of him mentioning a splode of some kind on the show, uh, which yeah. was, of course, taken from Next Wave, of which I have the f- page from the first issue on my wall in front of me. I'm very proud of it. Uh, you can follow at iFanboy on Twitter or uh, at iFanboy Comics on Instagram to find out what the pick of the week is before the show comes out. So you are prepared. You can follow us individually. Connor and I are on Instagram uh, at CS Kilpatrick and J.A. Flanagan, along with Ryan Haupt there. And he's just plain old helped on twitter he's still hanging on how long are you planning on hanging on twitter you still okay with it science twitter is actually pretty good so um, oh that's good yeah that's i i, I okay. really enjoy the the science twitter sphere that i kind of orbit and um, so that hasn't been ruined i guess this yeah the scientists haven't split as much as the rest of the world yeah i mean there's a lot of talk about like how academia is terrible and we should all leave so there's you know it's sure it's not without but, it's but where where would you go <laughs> to the nonprofit sector which is where i have gone fair enough uh, I was like, I don't have time for this conversation. Yeah, it's fine. Subscribe to our YouTube page at youtube.com slash iFanboy and you will see uh, all the old full-length video shows are up. The minis are still going up. Those are our short form. This past week, Superman versus Batman, colon, the debate continues, which sounds like an always sunny uh, title. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, My Friend Dahmer, uh, which is a, a wonderful graphic novel. It's also a wonderful Durf. film review, uh, film adaptation of that well, graphic yeah. novel. Yeah. Durf back Durf uh, did the great graphic novel about Jeffrey Dahmer. Um, it was his so, high school classmate, which was... Yeah, yeah. Also, I think I talked to him... I don't know if I just emailed with him and we put him on the show, but for a guy who does creepy comics, like he was a really genuinely nice dude. I remember that. I don't that think he was on the him. show. I think he I definitely like corresponded with him at some point. And I just checked, and 6% of all Tox Blows are recommender. That would mean 6 that was easy math for you to do today, Connor. It was. So, and the, those are all. Ron is on all those. Sometimes we doubled up back in the old days. Yeah. But I would say I did eighty percent of the talks blows. Jay Ferber was the first talks blow. And I, there was a a pre Jay Ferber interview we did with Paul Cornell that yes. wasn't labeled talks blow. Right. But so technically, you could say Paul Cornell was for some the first officially branded talks blow was Jay Ferber. And uh, I'm Ryan. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Did I nail it? Hey, if you like the show, please consider leaving a review. Please don't mention any Hemsworth in your review. <laughs> no, two. First, first person to mention Hemsworth in a review, we'll, we'll send you no, a surprise. No, I mean, we're going to get zero stars from Hemsworth fans, and we all love the Hemsworth brothers. It's a bit, people. It's a bit. Don't, don't. If you're a super Hemsworth, if you're a super Luke Hemsworth fan, let this one there, go. There, there 100% are. Review There's next a week's weird episode. Facebook group, and they're all aggrieved that he's not the star. I guarantee it. So please consider a review or star rating on Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcast. Tell your friends, your mom, your kid. Tell Luke Hemsworth, and then when he gets in touch with us, I will put him in touch with there Josh. People with annoying stickers on their vehicles about how they are. Help enough. us spread the love. Uh, thanks. <laughs> I would just like to point out if you are a big. A uh, fan of the Hemsworths or Luke in general, and you're mad at Josh. You can't get him on Twitter anymore. It's some nice lady in England has his old Twitter handle, so don't go coming at her. Does she? Yeah, That's and nice. uh, uh, you can't get to him. He's insulated. Yeah, it's true. So you all broke me already. I had to get the fuck out. So, <laughs> so <laughs> you know, if you want to write an angry email, maybe we'll do it on the show. 
But just just point your your howitzers at Josh. The idea of me, you can't point them actually at me. <laughs> right. Unless maybe it's your neighbor. Maybe your neighbor's super into Luke Hemsworth. Luke Hemsworth. No, I'm, sure he's got no I'm going around through my neighbor. Guys, I have to edit this. Thing. Can we? Come on. <laughs> Thanks for listening to this week's show. I'm Connor. Connor, what are you going to have for lunch? Tacos. Oh, that's so good. British tacos? Hey, Ryan, tell, me, tell me about yeah, tacos in Washington. Tacos. I'm going to tell... I'm doing, an, I'm doing an England taco. I'm going to yeah. tell everyone that my name is Ryan. Put chili on your spaghetti. Top it with cheese. See you next week. <laughs> <laughs>